It's just after quarter past uh, six now. Back now to events here and the new Prime Minister's entry. Profound economic challenges was the way he himself um, described the current situation. Sean's with us now to take us through how Rishi Sunak might approach those challenges. Morning, Sean. Morning, Michelle. They're well known, aren't they? At least they've been laid out in the last few weeks. This £40 billion black hole, as some are putting it, in the public finances in the years to come. Inflation at highest level for 40 years and new data showing that UK economic activity was actually shrinking at its fastest pace in almost two years on one measure. I've got Robert Forrester with me, who's chief executive of Vertu Motors. So you'll know that the trade brands Bristol Street Motors, Macklin Motors operates 160 car dealerships across the country, 7,000 people under his watch. Morning, Robert. Morning, Sean. What do you think, you know, on an economic to-do list for Rishi Sunak, what should be top of it? Uh, Well, we need stability. It's an overused word, but it was quite nice when we had stable government and a stable economy and we didn't have racing away inflation. But I mean, I think we have to put into context that the British economy is in the global economy and these are global issues that the government's facing, which actually makes them probably harder to deal with. Uh, But business needs uh, an environment in which it can invest and for that it needs stability. So what, what are the type of things you need stability around then? Well, I think there's three areas. Uh, we clearly need inflation to be brought under control. Actually, our inflation rate is a lot lower than many other countries in the Western uh, sphere at the moment, but it, it, it needs to be brought under control. We need interest rates that are predictable and don't spike, and that has caused a degree of uh, chaos actually for business in the last uh how's that impacted you in the last few weeks well just simply if you look at the interest rates that uh are being charged to customers for finance as one example they have gone up considerably new cars can be up to 9.9 percent used cars i saw one of our competitors at 13.9 percent the other day so that clearly has an impact on on customers but also on investment decisions as well if you get higher interest rates or interest rates that aren't predictable uh, how do you evaluate future projects over a 10-year time frame? So we need, you know, the adults back in the room, to be brutally honest with you. And I, I think of all the people on the pitch, Mr Sunak has a, a good track record of dealing with difficult issues. I want to ask you about um, your thoughts for the UK over, say, that 10, 15-year time frame. Because yesterday I was talking, to, at quarter past seven yesterday morning, I was talking to Guy Hans, the founder of the private equity firm Terra Firma. Uh, and he was pretty forthright in his views on the Conservative Party and also where the economy was going. Let's just hear a little bit from him. Steadily increasing taxes, um, steadily reducing um, benefits and social services, um, higher interest rates, Um, and eventually the need for a bailout from the IMF like we were in the 70s. That was what he said, Robert, uh, when he was saying that was what would happen unless the government renegotiated Brexit. The the economy would be doomed otherwise. Do do you agree with that over that 10, 15-year period you're talking about? I I really don't, to be honest with you. I mean, we're we're dealing with global issues here. Uh, Inflation in the Netherlands, for example, is considerably higher than the UK. And, you know, Brexit... It's a settled issue as far as the British public are concerned. And we've got a Brexit. To what extent is it a settled issue? I mean, I still have many, many businesses concerned about you know what the, the our trade relations are going to be like with the European Union and what they're like right now. Well, I mean we sell lots of cars that are imported from the European Union and the issue that we face isn't Brexit, it's such a global commodity supply issues, reducing the amount of cars that can be produced. I mean, what we need is stability. We certainly don't need another three years of naval gazing as we uh, try and reopen old issues. We need a government that is going to actually calm down, forget big revolutionary changes and actually get back to some stability in what is a very difficult global climate. Do you have a view on, on what you think the Brexit approach should be now? Because you know, the Northern Ireland Protocol uh, uh, approach to immigration will be on the list of things for, for Rishi Sunak to make some policy on. Yeah, I, I can't see Brexit. Apart from the Northern Ireland Protocol, I can't see Brexit being in his top five, to be honest. He's got enough issues to deal with without reopening that one. I'm bringing Kathleen Brooks on this, uh, who is Director at Minerva Analysis. Uh, Kathleen, morning to you. Good morning, Sean. Uh, I mean, lots of people having views on these kind of things at the moment. It, just hearing Guy Han's words from yesterday, that that scenario, Kathleen, about the IMF uh, needing to step in at one point, at some point potentially. I mean, is that really realistic? The markets seem investors seem pretty happy with how things have turned out in the UK now compared to a few weeks ago. 
I think we're a good few steps away from that. I remember at all points, the UK government has been solvent. So usually the IMF only comes in if a country is insolvent and they can't afford to pay their debt, their debts back. And actually what we've seen since Rishi Sunak was announced as prime minister yesterday is a sharp drop in the cost of government borrowing. Now that doesn't feed through to consumer borrowing, but we saw a 30 basis point drop on 10 year guilt yields yesterday, back to the levels they were on the 23rd of September, that fateful day uh, before, before the mini budget was announced. So if anything, the UK has become more credit worthy in the last 24 hours. Actually, it just well, I think we've still got Robert. Just on that move in itself, Robert, how much of a difference does a you know a third of a percentage point make to you on interest rates? Oh, it makes a massive difference just in terms of confidence and sentiment. Uh, you know, we're, we're making decisions. We need to know where interest rates are going to go. We're in you know we're in the market potentially looking at swaps and things like that. And having stability of interest rates and interest rates coming down rather than spiking up makes a big difference to I think man in the street and to business people. So Kathleen, we we have this. Um, Office of Budget Responsibility sort of announcement on Monday. We're going to get more details. Effectively, it seems like it might may well be a budget on, on Monday from the Chancellor and Rishi Sunak in charge. How will all of this impact what will happen with interest rates next? Because it is in just over a week's time, the Bank of England will be making a decision again. Yeah, absolutely. And I think by reversing the uh, the, the, the budget put forward by Kwasi Kwarteng, that was considered very inflationary. And there were expectations that the Bank of England would at one point do an emergency rate hike and have to hike interest rates by by huge amounts, you know, multiple percentage points. Whereas now expectations are that they will raise interest rates by 75 basis points. Now, that would still be the biggest single rate rise for the UK since Black Wednesday in 1992. However, it is in line with what other global central banks are doing. So we get, we're, we're back to the normal, if you, if you see what I mean, because if it's Essentially, inflation is at 10% in the UK, so they need to work hard to bring that down. But constrained public spending, which is what we expect to hear on Monday uh, when we get the OBR uh, projections and that budget, as you say, along with um, what some would argue is more sensible economic policy for this current environment. And I think we could see um, interest rates peak at a lower rate than what had been expected. And in fact, the Bank of England's deputy governor has said that. So the market is now looking at a peak in UK rates between between 4.8 and about 4.9%. Um, after the mini budget, that was at about 6%. So it's really come down quite a lot. Are you calling it a budget, you know, with your clients that you're talking to, Kathleen? Is, I realise we haven't really given it a name yet. Well, what's quite interesting, I think people are much more interested in the projections from the OBR, um, whether or not they call it fiscal statements, fiscal events, whatever else. Let's not have another fiscal event. I don't think anyone wants that for the health of the UK economy. If they want to call it, it, it it's a budget, essentially. Yes. OK, we'll, 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 we'll go with that for now. Uh, Kathleen, thanks so much. Kathleen Brooks from Minerva Analysis and uh, Robert Foster there from Chief Executive of Virtu Motors. If- 